Hello and welcome to the first TNC podcast of the new season. Yes, we've not started the new season yet, but I thought I'd get in there a little bit early. I'm really, really happy to be speaking with this man today. Three years at NCFC, one glorious, and when I say glorious, I mean glorious goal. Jamaican international, of course, former Norwich City forward. Ladies and gents, welcome to our first guest of the new season, Jamar Loza. Jamar, first of all, mate, thanks so much for coming on today. How's everything with you? Yeah, all good. I'm all good. I'm um, trying to get over my injury from um, last season, um, doing a lot of rehab and, and um, physical work to, to, to get me ready for the new season. Good man, good man. Well, obviously, of course, we we hope you uh, recover in time for the new season. I'm sure you will. We'll get talking about your 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 current club um, towards the end of of this podcast. And mate, let's let's kick off by taking you right back in time um, to, to to a time where you you probably actually don't remember all that much. Of course, you are from Kingston in in Jamaica originally. And what age were you when you came across to England? And what was the story there? How did you get to England? And how did that work? Um, basically, obviously, um, as you know, Jamaica is a, a very poor country. So my, my parents, obviously, um, my mum initially moved over to England to, to find work, basically. Wow. Um, she couldn't take me with her at the time. Um, my dad was in America, so I went with him to America at the start. Um, I remember not really enjoying it um, at my, in America with my dad and his partner. Um, so then by that time, my mum was um, was in a, a good job and she could bring me over to England. Wow, wow. So yeah, I came from America um, to England about age six. And um, yeah, um, I, I've been here ever since. What a story. I love those stories. We spoke to Kai Kamar on the on the podcast, who of course had a had a had a similar journey from Sierra Leone all, all the way to, to Norwich City. And I'm always fascinated about how you end up from that position and then into football. And how did you end up at Norwich City, Jamal? Because you spent many years, of course, in our in our youth system. But how did that all come along? Did you get scouted? Was it a normal process or um to be honest, it was it was a weird one because football is not something I was really serious about as a young kid. Um, I, I kind of started playing really late um, compared to like, other kids. Um, I wasn't really the best in school or anything like that. Um, I, I was qu quite a late developer. So um, I think about age 13, um, I was playing locally and that's when I started like doing well. Um, my agent saw me and basically to said um, she wants to bring me to, to, to pro professional clubs. Um, obviously, when you hear that as a young kid, you're buzzing and, and, and that sort of stuff. So um, she took me to Chelsea first. Wow. Um, so, yeah, that was my first trial. And <laughs> I, <laughs> I've done really well, to be fair. Um, and Chelsea, it, this was, I think, was about four games to the end of the season. Right. So Chelsea agreed to take me on till the end of the season which wasn't long I think it was like a month or two months or something like that so I end, uh, I played the end of that season with Chelsea um it didn't quite work out I was a right back at this point I <laughs> really I never knew that yeah it, it didn't quite work out and then I went on a few different trials after that um loads of different teams Bolton Colchester South End and stuff like that um and then she took me to Norwich and then I'd, I'd done really well there. And yeah, they, they signed me on a contract. Did you, you said obviously that football wasn't a massive passion of yours. So how, yeah. did you know, did you know what else you wanted to become? And, and also how did you, how did you get through that, that period of time? Because you've, you're obviously going to clubs, plenty of clubs by the sounds yeah. of things for trials and you're just yeah. not making the mark. So what did you want to do in that time? If it wasn't a footballer and, and I just don't know how, how did you get into Norwich City? So, um, well, I, I say football wasn't really, like, on my mind. I, I'm, I'm not sure what I did want to do at that age, to be honest. I think what made me go that direction is because a lot of my friends were, were playing football and they they were getting into teams. So, naturally, I'm with my friends and I started going in that that direction as well. Um um, what was the second question? Sorry. I just, I just really wanted to know how how you got through, um, because obviously you, you're being rejected by these clubs. It's yeah, not yeah. Any other way. So yeah. 
did, did you believe that you were eventually going to make it? Well, obviously, it started really well at Chelsea, and I was flying there. And after that, obviously, I thought, OK, I didn't make it at Chelsea, but then I could definitely get another team. But then when I was getting rejected at all these other teams, it was like a big knock on confidence. Mm. And I did start to question myself, like, am I good enough? Especially, I think I went on a few. And then I think the make or break one was Colchester. I went to Colchester and they they said no. They said they didn't want me. And after that, I thought, oh, maybe it's not for me, really. Um, and then similar time, I, I went to, to Norwich short, shortly after that which kind of helped. I think, obviously, if there was a long gap, then it would have probably been, I probably would have just said, nah, but it was it was quite short after um, I went to Norwich, done really well, and and, and, and I, was, I was so happy when they, when they signed me. How What was it like being in and around that Norwich City youth system for, for those years, mate? Like, what was your experience like with that Norwich City crest on as a youth player? Like, did you believe you were going to get to the point that you got to, which was, of course, making your debut in the Premier League? Did you genuinely believe it? What were your years like in the youth team at Norwich? Um, well, from 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 day one, I think I fell in love with the club. Um, obviously, the training ground and stuff like that. It's amazing. Like, um, and I, 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 <laughs> obviously, I've, I've heard it's even better now. So, yeah. Um, at the time, at a young age, I, I, I don't think I had anyone around me to to tell me like what the next steps were so me as a young boy I was just I was just taking it as it come I didn't really like even when I signed age 15 I didn't I honestly didn't know that um when you get a scholarship you have to move away from home and all of this stuff so I'm literally just playing games um being going going back to school the next day saying yeah I play for North City just just buzzing really I didn't know this is the, the the sort of commitment later down the line you had to make, and um, when it got to that point, it was kind of a real eye opener. I was thinking, "Whoa!" Like I didn't expect this, but um, I was I was I was excited to do it. Um, so so that was good, and I and I was happy. I, I embraced well, like, everything that came 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 after. Yeah, I can't imagine that that feeling, and a feeling that I certainly can't imagine, which I which I really need to ask about, Jamal is. What was it like then going from the youth team, then all of a sudden you're training with the first team and being in and around that first team squad? Like, what was that really like? Because the players that you were hanging about with at that time at the club were were, were pretty impressive players and, of course, Norwich City legends. Let, let, let's not question that. So what was it like hanging around with the first team? What did it make you feel? Oh, it's, it's obviously unbelievable. I think... At Norwich at the time was really good. Um, the first team and the youth team and the young boys were quite close. I don't I don't think it's like that now. But um, so from the age of sixteen, you you the odd occasion you might train with the first team and stuff like that, um, which I was doing. Um, so obviously at that point it's like wow, like you're in awe, like you're thinking you see these boys on TV and stuff. So um, it all prepped me for when I was like a, a mainstay in the first team squad and training week in, week out with them to to, to really express, express myself and show what I can actually do. I'm just smiling so much because just as a Norwich boy, I just I would just be grinning so much. Well, what was the pinch yourself moment? Was, was there a moment when you trained for the, for the first team at the first, uh, you know, on the first perhaps occasion where you thought, I've, I've I've made it. Like, was there a moment? Was there a player who 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 spoke to you? What was that like? That first day of training. Um, I don't think it was. There was. I wouldn't say there was one moment. Obviously, if if I had to say something, it was it would be making my debut um, at Arsenal. That was obviously unbelievable. After that, I was. I kind of thought to myself, yeah, I've got a chance. Like, I can I can really kick on from here, um, especially with the manager believing in me. Um, yeah, and um, um, yeah, just just from there, really. I really wanted to ask you about that moment, Jamar. I remember it well. I was in the stands, I was in the upper Barclay at the time, 2013 14 season. Of course, your debut against Arsenal of all clubs, a huge club, and yeah. um, certainly, certainly at the time. And 
uh, that I loved it because obviously prior to this interview, I'm, I'm doing my prep and I'm winding back the clock and I'm remembering that day. And there's a fantastic picture of you shepherding the ball away from Meza Oza, the ball people. Like, <laughs> what was it like? What was it like, like running onto the pitch? Like, just describe that feeling. It was, it was unbelievable, to be honest. Because um, earlier that season, I was in loan at South End and I was I was doing well. And um, so obviously they, they, they recalled me from my loan to, to, to potentially help um, Norwich from go, get going down. And I think the last few games were Chelsea, Man United, Arsenal. It was a, it was a hard run. Yeah. And, and I thought, they, well, they, they recalled me to, to, to play in these games. So I, I was buzzing. Obviously the Man United one and the Chelsea one, I, I, I didn't make it on the bench. And um, I was really frustrated because obviously I, I wanted to play. I thought this is why they, they brought me back. I was really frustrated. And I think by the Arsenal game, I, I, I was on the bench, but I didn't think I'd get on. So then when I did eventually get on, I was like, yes, like this is what I've been waiting for. Like, I thought it was going to happen before. So I was just like so keen to impress and show everyone what I could do um, that I don't think I was like scared or intimidated by the big names at all as a young as a young kid which is quite is quite um quite good for me because i get re I, I do get nervous especially big games but um i think this one i was just so ready and i was so up for it like i've, I've g'd myself up for so long and i was so ready and I, I just thought yeah like this is this is this is this is my time i've got nothing to lose really mate i remember what as i say i was in the upper barclay and i'm smiling because i remember that day i'd never shouted go on so many times in my life because you went on the pitch and you were just buzzing about like yeah. it was like a headless chicken yeah. and how did you how did you mentally prepare did you mentally prepare for the moment because i know you're saying you were up for it but yeah who gave you the call to come on and 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 what were you what were you instructed to do when when you when you went onto the pitch as a young player for the first time oh well, I was warming up um I was warming up as you do um obviously I, I'd never been like involved before so I was just trying to make sure I was ready if 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 I got if I get if I got called on um I think my final instructions was from the manager at the time Neil Adams um, just saying, um, just go express yourself. Just um, don't um, just keep it simple when you can, but mainly express yourself and and show you deserve to be out there. So I I think the the club being down already, and mm. obviously we were two 0 down at the time, kind of took some even more pressure off. So I could literally just go and 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 do do what I could do. What a moment, mate. I'm so proud that you did it. And you met, you've mentioned a couple of times already, which I think speaks volumes, is, of course, Neil Adams, um, you know, has a great relationship with a lot of the younger players at the club, of course, now yeah. loan manager at Norwich City. What was your relationship really like with him and how much of an impact did he have on you? Because, you know, I, I remember seeing a lot of really positive quotes from Neil Adams in the local press, just, you know, talking about just how good you you were and are now, I'm sure. And um, what, what was your relationship with Neil Adams like when you were at Norwich City? Oh, it was brilliant. Um, obviously, this is this is a guy that's um, coached me from 16, 16 years old. So he's seen the development. He's seen, he knows, he knows my game inside out. So he knows if, they, the, the the team need X um, and I can do that. He'll he'll put me on. So me and him got on really well um, from 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 young. I remember when when I first started off, he was there, there wasn't that much staff, so he was our youth team coach. But then he used to take us home in a mini bus. Like we 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 were proper close. Like it wasn't it wasn't an average manager um, player kind of situation. We were really close. We spoke every day. Um, obviously, he then take us home, um, and stuff like that. So it, to then progress, and he's my my gaffer, and I'm 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 a first team player. It was just it was brilliant. Obviously, in training, he'd give me loads of advice, what what I need to work on, what I need to do, to to, to get in the team, and stuff like that. It was just it was a shame when when he did get, get sacked. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a real shame. And and you speak there that that word advice, and I'm keen to actually home in on this subject more Jamar because of course around that time at the club there were some there were some good players some experienced players that had played yeah. 
big clubs and big games. Russ Martin, of course, our captain at the time, for the majority of the time the year at the club. Of course, in front of you, you had Gary Hooper, you had Grabs, you had Cam Jam, Cam and Jerome as well. What did you, well. what did you learn from those players? No, def- um, training with these players every day, um, I think that only makes you better. Um, these are players that's, that's got um, bags amount of experience in the in the Premier League and other leagues. Obviously, Carl Lafferty, he wasn't even um, yeah. he wasn't even in and around the squad, and he you, you saw what he was doing for Ireland at the time. He was unbelievable. So it just shows a, a guy a guy like that couldn't get in a team, and I was behind all of them trying to trying to trying, trying to get in. It, it, it was difficult. And obviously, I, I understood my role as as a young boy. I needed to be patient, and mm-hmm. there's obviously levels. So, I just I just needed to wait my turn. Um, and thankfully, um, it did come when we had a lot of injuries, um, which was really unusual to have four. I think three strikers at the time were injured, so that's why I got my um, chance at this one. You've mentioned a, a player there that certainly got a bit of a stigma about him at, at Norwich City. Kyle Lafferty. You had a yeah had a chant when he was at the club um you know of course he didn't make play many games fans wanted him to play more games yeah you, you said that and he, he was a good player but i don't i don't quite understand why he wasn't given more of a chance in Norwich. so was he was he a bit of a mickey taker behind the scenes was he the joker that, that everyone says he was yeah i think everyone knows um <laughs> was was was, was, was like the class clown as they say um <laughs> But every, everyone loved him. He 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 was always he's a funny guy. Everyone loved him. He, his band was unbelievable at times. Um, I don't know if maybe the the coaches didn't like that. I, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't know. I just I think it was probably more because the strikers were ahead of him were were doing better. Obviously, Cameron Jerome and and um, um, Lewis Grabben were the were the number ones, and Gary Hooper was um, just behind them. So I think it was hard for him. Um, as well as any striker um, to, to to get into the team, but what he was doing for Ireland um, speaks for itself. Um, he's obviously a great player and and stuff. But yeah, no, he was definitely the joke. He definitely um, got the the change the changer and buzzing. <laughs> I'm sure I can only imagine. And a, a, a man that I, I'm really interested in asking about because um, the, the, I'm sure got a changing room buzzing is, is Teddy Sheringham because you actually went on an emergency loan to Stevenage in 2015. I'm, I'm really eager to ask you about Teddy Sheringham. What was he like to work under as a gaffer? Oh, he was brilliant for me. Um, he didn't really take a lot of training sessions, but he'd always do finishing with the with the strikers at the end. <laughs> of and, course, he would. And to, to, to see him at his age, literally still finishing, just like he was, um, how many years ago? It's it's, it's unbelievable. Just to, it just goes to show you you never really lose it. Um, you can obviously lose your pace and stuff, but the, that class, he's he's definitely still got it. Um, but yeah, no, good guy, very good guy. Um, proper down to earth. You could speak to him by anything. Um, I, I learned a lot from from that spell. Although I didn't play as much as I want, um, it was just another um, big learning curve and experience for me in my in my career. I love the fact that he, he just wanted to kick about with the strikers. Yeah. So, really, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, literally, um, mate. And then, of course, you've actually played on the international stage. You, you, you of course, played for your country. The, the squad that actually won the Caribbean Cup in 2014. What was that experience like as, as a youngster? Playing for your country, that must have just been such a proud moment for you and also your family. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think that's probably one of the proudest moments today because, um, obviously, the Caribbean Cup was hosted in Jamaica. So loads of my family are still in Jamaica obviously came to the games wow. which I, I don't really get a lot of family come to the games here but um, there everyone came out in their um, in their numbers to, to support me and the country so it was brilliant and I think sometimes people forget um, we, we had some big names playing for Jamaica back then as well so um, it, was, it was unbelievable being around that squad as well so um, no it was, it was definitely a, a, a great moment and an honour how did that call up happen to your country? And like, what did, 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 was it an email? Was it a phone call? Was it a text? How did you feel when you got that call? Um, I'd previously trained with the under 23s. Yes. Um, um, a little bit. Um, so obviously they knew about me. And then obviously as soon as I made my debut for Arsenal, they, they called me up straight away. <laughs> 
and um, obviously I was buzzing. I was like, yeah, let's let's go and um, played some unbelievable friendlies, um, Japan, um, Egypt um, against that Mo Salah was playing. This is unbelievable. Oh wow! So you played against Mo Salah? That's incredible, mate. That was, yeah, that's yeah. Awesome. What was that yeah. like? Oh, you he, he you could you could see you could see this was obviously when he was a lot younger. Um I think he was at Chelsea at the time. Yeah. And the Egyptian fans literally idolized him. So they knew what kind of player he was gonna be. Um but yeah, he was he was tearing it up. It was it was it was really good. It was really good to watch. But I, I tell you what was good to watch, Jamal, is of course I and mean, we cannot do this podcast without talking about it. I know the Norwich fans watching and listening, they're ready to hear this from you. That goal against <laughs> Huddersfield away, your first goal for the club, your only goal for the first team, and it meant so much. We salvaged a point, a point that we really needed at that time. Describe that day. How did it go from start to finish? Not just scoring a goal. And, mate, honestly, you're, you're cello that day, right? I have never seen such a passionate, wild. It was like you turned into a wild bear all of a sudden, man. Just, I've never seen such passion from a from a striker in, in a celebration. What was that like? Well, that day, I, to be honest, I couldn't tell you what happened that day. I literally just remember. <laughs> I literally can just remember it being a crazy back and forth, back and forth game. Um, I came on, I think about 88th minute or something like that. And then they, they must have scored when I came on and I was just like, oh, God, it doesn't look good, you coming on and them scoring. It's like, like it, it looks like it's your fault, essentially. Yeah. So um, I didn't, I, I thought, yes, it's done. Um, I didn't realise there was even enough time to then score again. So, um, but the ball got lobbed up and somehow it found its way to me. And yeah, it, it was... It was a simple finish, I'd say. Um, I was in the right place at the right time, more than anything. But yeah, I was just, I was just so happy, man. Um, I was buzzing. I, so I think I'd, that season I'd been in and around the team for so long. Obviously, from the previous season, I'd, I'd been spoken about as one to watch and mm -hmm. one that might be playing and stuff. And I didn't feel like I, I, I got, I got a chance to, to, to do that. So then when I came on. For the first time and scored, it was just like wow, like yes, I've, I've I've taken my chance. Like hopefully I get I get another chance. I remember just I just the lead up to the goal, it was like pinball, and I think yeah. it, was it I think it was Redders that originally crossed it in. I think it kind of like took a did it take a deflection, but it somehow ended up with you. And you say, mate, it was a simple finish. You must have been shitting yourself when the ball <laughs> lands at your feet that late. <laughs> Wayne, you say it's simple. Don't lie to me. You must have been really nervous to finish that. To be honest, those, those are the ones where, like, it's just pure instinct. So you you haven't got time to think or time to get nervous. It's literally just there. Boom. Like, if it was a one and one, then you can you're you're thinking about it, where do I put it? Where do I put it? But it came at me so fast. I literally just had to to think fast, and it, it was pure instinct, just taking a touch and, and smashing it. So. Yeah, no, I was buzzing, and I think that the celebration showed. Well, that was instinctual as well, because you couldn't have planned that celebration. You were over the boardings, in yeah. the fans, panning your chest. Yeah. It was, I think Redders was first to you that day. Yeah. Like, I just, I, mate, I, I'm in awe of that moment. I just think that that is such a special moment, so kudos to you for it. I, I'm sure that Norwich City fans will never, ever forget it. And 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 what you, I'm sure, won't forget is, is your emotions actually leaving the club. We've done the highs, let's do the lows as well. It would be fair to do that. What were your emotions like when you left the club? Did you feel like it was the right time to leave or did it feel like unfinished business for you at Norwich City? Um, I feel like it was probably the right time, although I was, I was really gutted. Um, if they offered me a new contract, I would have definitely stayed um, because obviously I, I, I'd, I've been at the club for so long and I love the club and I still felt like I had more to give to the club. Um, but um, yeah, I think it was probably the right time to go and and um, play week in, week out and start to try and make a name for myself elsewhere because obviously I wasn't going to get the opportunity at Norwich. So um, yeah, no, I do feel like it was the right time.
Uh, interesting insight. And um, I, I want to ask you actually about, I want to take you to the present day now, Jamal. I was going to let you get away with this. And I thought, no, 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 I'm going to ask him this question. It's fair to say that your recent transfer uh, from, from Kings Inn to, to, to Woking, um, it did cause a stir. Yeah. You, you you made just nine appearances uh, for for Kings Lynn, and then you went back to work. I can see you, you I can see you cricking your neck because because <laughs> you're worried about this. So just explain right now what actually happened there. Um, I, I haven't I haven't got any bad words to say about Lynn. To be honest, I, I think the fan the Lynn fan probably are expecting me to say it was it, I had a terrible time and and whatnot, but. Honestly, I, I really enjoyed my time there, although it was short. Um, I think it was it was the wrong move for me, to be honest. I think I should have stayed. I should have stayed at Woking, um, and I and I, and I realised that after. But um, Lin, Lin's a brilliant club, brilliant bunch of boys, um, brilliant manager. Um, I, I enjoyed my time there. Obviously, I wasn't playing as much as I wanted to, and that was for different reasons. Obviously, the manager went with different formations at different times for different games. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that all played a part in it as well, as well as um, me obviously realising I made a mistake and I should have stayed at Woken. So um, I, I don't have any bad words to say about Lynn. It's a, it's a brilliant club um, for a brilliant bunch of boys. Um, and yeah, I did, I did enjoy my time there. What, what was it like? I'm not going to let you get away with this easy. What was it like, though, reading the negativity and the yeah. um the rumors or the hearsay because you know it was it was pretty out there on social media there was stories yeah. about it in the local press there was allegations that you were tapped up what sort of impact did that have on you at that time were you angry reading that um <laughs> i wouldn't say i was angry obviously it's not it's not really nice to hear or nice to read um, because yeah, it's, it's all over your feed and stuff like that. So um, um, I saw it. Um, I, I know these things happen all the time in football, so you got to take it with a pinch of salt. I know what fans are like. Um, they'll they'll believe anything they hear. So um, it's, I, I just I was really disappointed in um, the chairman coming out saying that I'm earning x x amount and and saying I, I got this signing on fee and all of this. So I, I didn't appreciate that because although it was lies, it was, it was it's unnecessary really, do you know what I mean? So um, apart from that, I expected all the other backlash with the yeah. fans being um, angry. That's 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 normal. I, I, I wouldn't expect anything else. Um, if I was to leave Woking or any other club um, in controversial manner, the, the, the fans would be pretty... Pissed off if I if I could say that. So yeah, yeah, yeah that, 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 that's that's that that was expected. Um, I'm sure if things worked out different, um, they, they they'd love me. So do you know what I mean, it's just that's 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 just how football works, really. Interesting. No, thanks for opening up, mate. I do I do appreciate that. That's what I yeah. tend, to, tend to press people for the for the answers, and, and we've certainly got one there. I want to ask you about how you look at Norwich City now, actually, because of course it's very well documented just how much Daniel Farker cares about bringing the young players into that first team. Is there a part of you that's like frustrated that you weren't almost in this era of Norwich City? Because surely you would have been given more of a chance if you were playing under Daniel Farker. Yeah, definitely. I, I, sometimes I feel like if maybe if it was five years down the line I was there, I would have, I would have been in for a better chance. Um, but um, that's all hindsight. Um, but yeah, now for the young boys now, it must be brilliant knowing you're good enough. You're going to get that chance, and with a lot of clubs in in the country, that's not the case. You can be you can be as good as you want, like say a Man City. It's mm. it's, it's rare unless you're a Phil Foden type. You ain't going to really get a chance. You're going to have to go on loan. And um, what people don't realize is how hard the the them them leagues like League One, League Two are. Um, mm. It's not the same sort of football as you get in the Premier League. So a Phil Foden might not do as well in a League One. Um, for example, if he was to 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 go on loan there, so that's just that's just the sort of things people don't really realise that like he'd go there, won't do well, and all of a sudden he's a bad player. Do you know what I mean? So it's 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 interesting. Yeah, you, you have to have a lot of luck in this game as well. Yeah, um, which which I which I've found and I've seen. Um, 
So yeah, no, nah, the, the young boys at Norwich, they must they must be buzzing. Um, obviously, I, I I still speak to some of the the, the younger ones now. Um, try to give them some advice um, here and there, so um, they don't make this that kind of mistakes I made um, growing up. Are you, are you are you still a Norwich fan? Would you class yourself as a Norwich fan? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Obviously, I'm I'm still living in Norwich. Um, I still want to see my local um, town do well. So I'm definitely a Norwich fan. Um, first and foremost. Um, and then, obviously, I, I, I like Arsenal as well, but I'd say Norwich first, especially now they're in the Premier League. Good man, good man. That's what I like to hear. And, and, and something, that, something that you do like is not just Norwich City Football Club. You, you love a hat. Um, you, you actually, you, you own or run your own, you, your own hat business, or is it a brand? Yeah, it's a brand. It's a, it's, it's, it's a clothing brand, but um, I think we started off with hats. So our, our hats are like our best sellers. Um, so yeah, yeah, it's called Nouveau London. Well, mate, we we love a hat on Talk Norwich City. We had sailors hats on for the majority of last season. HMS pissed the league. We've had all sorts of hats, so um, we'll, we'll make sure that we uh, we we get one for for next season. Where and and where can people, where can people get one? Where where do we follow? Um, there's there's our Instagram Nouveau London, and on there you um you see the the link to our website, so you can you can you can purchase a hat on there. What about that for a plug, Norwich City fans? Get a Jamal yeah. Lester hat. Why the hell would you not? And Jamal, lastly, thank you, of course. Thank you for all of your answers and opening up to us today and telling your, your Norwich City story. Have you got a message for the thousands of Norwich fans that are watching and listening to this right now? Um, just all the best for the upcoming season. I'm sure um, I'm sure Norwich will do well again this season, as, as they do. Um, and, yeah, hopefully we stay up. That's the, that's the, the aim of the game. We, he said we. That means he's a fan. I absolutely love it, Jamal. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming on today. Thank you to every single person that's that's watched this show, that's that's listened as well on Spotify, iTunes, and SoundCloud. Don't forget to subscribe. We are almost at twenty five thousand subscribers on YouTube. There is only one thing left to say, Jamal. Do you know what that is? On the ball city. Yes. <laughs> Wasn't even briefed on the ball city.